Okay guys, today we're doing a no start diagnosis on a Honda Civic LX. It is a 1999 model year with a 1.6 liter engine. There is our vehicle emission control information label. It is a 16 VAGGGE. I believe that's the engine code. I don't know, might not be. But for you Honda guys, maybe you'll thank me for that. I have my son here with me. We're getting his car inspected. Maybe you saw us on the viscous fan problem on the Chevy Trailblazer. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. That'll be up at some point. But we're working on this Honda now. He's going to be my crank guy for me. We're going to use a real high tech piece of equipment. And that would be this little Tesla. All right, first test. I'm just checking for spark. It's going right to something metal on the car. Any plug wire is fine, and I'm just looking for spark to jump out to my test light. Okay, no spark. Okay, next step. Just staying with the test light. I've shown you guys this in other videos, another Honda where I showed how to do diagnostics with some basic tools. I'll put a link in the description of this video for that one. Uh, next step is I'm going to check for injector pulse. I've shown this test a few different ways. The way I'm going to do it this time is connect my test light to battery positive and then when I touch something metal on the car, the light should light. So I need to... There we go. Test light light. So when, when that light finds a ground, it's lighting, okay? Next step, I'm disconnecting my injector and one of my two wires should flicker this test light and I'm just touching the pin. I'm not stuffing this in there. We don't want to spread the terminals. You guys that have been watching me for a long time are probably tired of hearing me say that. Um, turn the key on first, Jake. Or no, just go ahead and crank it. Okay. Go ahead again. Nice. All right, so what that tells me, I'll let you guys see it again. This is my control wire. The bottom wire is the wire that goes to my engine computer. Watch again. All right, crank it. Okay, good. All right, so that test tells me the bottom wire, which is my brownish colored wire um, is injector control and that tells me the computer is receiving the RPM signals that it needs to control the fuel injectors and so what that means is my RPM those same RPM signals will be used for spark control and so this is looking more and more like a faulty coil as we go here so let's go to the distributor and do some checks over there now can I stay with the test light uh, let's see if I remember my coil control wires I could I need to know I need to know which one my coil wires are I remember the yellow and black or black and yellow being a coil feed what I don't know is which one the control wire is that's really important for this test I might be able to make that determination. So now what I'll do is test light to ground. All right, this should be the feed wire, the yellow black. You see that's powered up. And uh, go ahead and crank that, Jake. Okay. And then the igniter's inside. So I don't think I have a coil negative that I can show you. I might have a tack signal. really need a I know there's three different sensors there's a top dead center sensor there's a cylinder sensor and then there's a crank and they're all two wire so this would be one the tan and blue and tan would be one of the sensors the white blue and white would be the other one I'm not totally sure about the rest of these that leaves me a solid black on this side and then a yellow green and a blue ok 
Okay, I have to take the distributor cap off. If I'm staying with the test light, I have to take the distributor cap off. I can get the scope out and, and show you uh, an amperage measurement, which I'm probably going to do, but I'm trying to think of you guys that only have a test light and how to troubleshoot these. We either have an igniter problem or we have a coil problem on this Honda, I'm sure of it. Uh, all right, let me take the cap off. Okay guys, I took the distributor cap off and the rotor off and the little black cover. And uh, well, one thing we can do since I'm here, my test light's still going to ground. Uh, we, I can show you the spark again. Go ahead, crank it, Jake. Okay, okay. notice no spark again. Uh, this is coil negative, which should be lit. This goes right to our igniter in this location, and then this is underneath this one, this screw here is coil positive. You see the test light's lighting there too. So what we'll do is we'll compare positive cranking to negative. Crank it! Okay. Hang on, this battery charger's off. I need to turn it back on. Battery is weak. Got a charger on here. Let's do that again. We'll compare positive of the coil to the negative. Okay, crank it. Okay. I need to make sure we get good connections here. This is having a weak battery for this test will make this test light dim on you and can give you some some inaccurate readings. Go ahead, crank it again. Alright, hold on. Yeah, this is not good. Hold on. Alright, we'll compare that to negative. This is the negative side of the coil. This one should flicker. Crank it. Again. Okay. I saw a flicker in that light. Crank it. Let me zoom you in. There's a difference. This is we're done. It needs a coil. A little bit sunny, so maybe hard to hard to see. This is coil positive. Crank it. Okay. Watch coil negative. There's coil negative. Crank it. Pretty tough to see that uh, flicker and crank it again. Yep. This is a bad ignition coil. There's another test you can do. Uh, and this is one that would potentially be necessary in the case of a coil primary that's shorted. Guys, for more info on this stuff that I'm showing you, I'm going to put some links in here for other videos where I talk about primary winding shorts and how this test can be variable. There's a variable to this test, but here's how you can account for that. If we unplug the igniter, or I can unbolt this here. Let's unplug this igniter pin. All right, what I'm going to do is isolate the coil. All right, and now I have the coil out of the way. What you need to understand is the igniter grounds the coil, it pulses it. And so now my test light's connected to battery positive. So when I touch a ground, you see my light is lighting. Hopefully you see that. The sun's kind of not being our friend here. Okay, touch a ground, light lights. What we want to see for this test, we go to the igniter pin and watch that rotor. We don't hit that. And touching on this igniter pin, it should pulse on and off when we crank it. Go ahead and crank it. Let you see the light. Crank it again. Okay. So what that tells you is that's a good igniter. And uh, again, coil is bad. So it's another way to do it to eliminate the variable of a shorted primary winding. And again, links in the description to this video for some other no start videos I've done using a test light some other control type testing videos see I call this coil primary control and the fact that we have control here guys tells us that our our signals let me talk about direction of flow here it goes from inputs in the distributor goes out to the computer and from the computer sends a signal back in to the igniter which turns the igniter on and off tells the igniter when to turn on and off the igniter then controls the coil 
And the fact that we have pulsing all the way out here says all of that is good. We are done. It needs an ignition coil. I'll show you one last test and that is the primary ramp of this and we'll be done. And this is more, um, more of a high tech test and some of you will appreciate this, some of you will not be able to do it, but I've given you enough using a $20 incandescent style test light to troubleshoot this system. In light of the do-it-yourselfer uh, direction I went with this, here's a scope that I have that is actually affordable for you guys, uh, you do it yourself. Is This is made by AES Wave. Uh, I'll put the link for this tool in the description of this video. It's actually called a, a U-scope and it, it's just a little pocket scope. There's a couple different versions of it. This is the deluxe kit and um, there's all kind of different adapters I have. I have a secondary ignition and some other test leads and I don't need really much of that. I just need my amp probe. Here is the scope. I have a couple other videos where I've shown this. So I'll link those in the description of this one as well. Um, let's make sure we are powered up. We are. That's good because I haven't used this in a while. And what we want to do is, well, get replaced with a little bit less glare but what we're going to use is the uh, is the low amp probe so that's it it plugs into the side and we're going to measure our coil control with this again just a little little handheld scope and an amp probe and so what we're going to do is we're going to connect this amp probe to either side of the coil and the nice thing about this test is we could have started with this test in that um, we could go right to, knowing the feed wire is the black and yellow on this, we can go right to the top of this connector right here. So keep in mind, this, this thing did not have spark, right? So we go right to the top of that connector and we use our amp probe. This is called an inductive amp probe and I'm set on a 20 amp setting. Okay, uh, conversions if you were using a different scope would be 100 millivolts per amp. So this setting, every one amp of current flow, this tool produces 100 millivolts of electricity. So it actually creates voltage. And then we feed that signal into a scope and the scope records it and we can see the waveform of the amperage. It's based on magnetic field strength. So we go around this direction of current flow there's an arrow on the tool pointing this way so we go down toward the distributor because power is going in so conventional theory current flow that way and then on my scope I'll set it up for you and then I'll let you guys see the screen it's gonna be hard in the sunlight to see both so I want to go there's some presets here we have primary ignition current so that's cool that AES this is actually a feature of uh, AES see if I can show you this um, there are other companies that carry this tool I know that but there's some software in here that's unique to uh, automotive systems primary ignition is what I want I'm gonna hit OK and it has me set up already the scales to the right, that's 32 amps up top, zero amps at the bottom. Alright, crank that again, Pete. Watch this. Watch the green line. Alright, see that line's upside down? Okay, good. Stop. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to invert that. Crank it. Alright, good. Crank it. Okay, now we have a time base issue. So now we... Hey, uh, how you doing? Good. Can I for you? Who's that? Angela. Hi, Angela. What's wrong? My radio. I have to get more familiar with this. A little bit longer time base. Here, I can crank this myself now. I'm inside the car. Sorry, we still got a glare here, but. Nice. All right, now what I want 
to do is set a trigger. Let's add again. This trigger level is set at 14 amps right now. We want to bring that down. This will stabilize our picture and keep it in our screen for us. That's a 5 amp trigger level right there. Yeah, that's a really nice picture of a shorted coil. All right, hang on. Let's do this now. That's in 5 amps per division. Let's go 2 amps per division. And now you see my trigger level changed. I'm now triggering at 2 amps. The yellow line is my trigger level. I could have left it at 2, but I'll crank this and watch it. Beautiful. Let's go. Just adjusting my scales here, guys. This is typical or, or common scope knowledge here, what I'm doing. That's a nice picture. But we'll stay at 5. And then what I want to do... I figured out how to hold. Last time I shot one of these, I'll put again description. Read the description of this video. I'll put a link for uh, some other videos where I use the U scope. Uh, I wasn't sure how to hold the waveform. There it is, right there. The button on top. So that's awesome. So let me crank it. There she is, right there. All right, so. All we needed to do, guys, when we started this project is if you have one of these tools and an amp probe, all you needed to do was connect it around the one feed wire to the coil, and then what you do is you look at this turn on this current ramp, and this tells us a lot. This tells us, number one, that we have coil control, and the fact that we have this ramp is telling you that your cam, your crank signals, distributor signals are good. It tells you your computer is good, and it's sending a signal to the igniter also tell you telling you your igniter is good and it's firing the coil and when you know how to read these ramps this straight up line right here at the beginning of this ramp is a shorted secondary winding when you see that now there's some variables to that as well but in, in our case um, we already checked that there isn't a smashed spark plug or something like that actually in this case on a distributor engine it would have to be four smashed spark plugs which is not it's not going to happen. This is a shorted secondary every time on this style of distributor. So what I'll do, I'll stay for you guys and I will put a coil in this. And we'll redo our checks again and I want to show you this pattern one more time. I mean, but how cool is that? All right, you got a scope and an amp probe. All you had to do is clip over that wire, take a reading, done. Don't have to take the distributor cap off. You don't have to do the igniter checks that I showed you absolute confirmation shorted coil the level here too uh, I believe we can pull cursors in and measure but you see that my trigger line is at the 3 amp level so that's about a 6 to 7 amp current ramp of that coil that is a good looking control bad turn on oscillations shorted secondary winding alright this part of this is for you guys that are interested in this tool um, just playing around with the tool here and and I realized that that I can I can zoom in on this waveform which is super awesome where was I okay that's with it held oh sweet so all I do is change the time base and that zooms on it okay can I also change the amperage scales yeah Awesome. What about cursors? How do I get my cursors in here? I want to measure this stuff. Okay, so the cursors were already there. See when I turn them on, watch them dis see them disappear. So the cursors were already there. How do I move them? Ah. Oh. Okay. Except that box is in my way.
unless I see that box is in my way that's kind of crappy so what do I do to fix that let's go like that cool hit OK go to my cursors There we go. Top of that cursor is nine. See, that's difference. V1. That's vertical cursor one. That's 7.84 amps at the peak of that. That's cool. And then if you wanted to, too, you could do your dwell time. Not that that matters to me. It doesn't. Press OK on cursors, go to, here's your, this is a time cursor, so there's time one, and then where's my other time cursor at? It's underneath. Let's pull that over. You got a coil coming, Pete? Actually, it's hold the shiver. Ah, oh, I just want the, I just want the coil. I know, but uh, it's actually like ten dollars more for the distributor. Yeah. Compared to the coil. Ah, it sucks. And listen. Yeah. And the and the coil wouldn't be here to like two thirty three plus. Ah, uh, okay. The distributor to have. All right. Anyway, time. There's your time cursors, and then T two. So we have a delta time of what? Delta time of. I think I'm reading this right, of 21.6 milliseconds. I think, let's see. Yeah, T2. And then T1, yeah, 20 millisecond dwell time. So that's cool. I'm just showing you guys, you can measure horizontal, you can measure vertical on a frozen picture. Cool. Let's see what the new one looks like. I just heard from Pete that uh, the coil was uh, $10 less than the entire distributor and we wouldn't be able to get the just the coil itself until later today so he just got the whole distributor. But uh, I think we're going to piece that coil in anyway. Alright, new coil coming up. Okay, um, we did get a whole distributor. But I wanted to prove to you guys it was just the coil, and so I pieced the coil in, and we'll be changing the distributor, uh, swapping the whole piece out off camera. But um, this is the new coil. Go ahead, crank it. All right, hold on. Get you. Sun's really bad with this. Crank it again. All right. So nice spark. Um, what I'm doing now is I am rigging up. A spark tester. Thanks, Pete. To um, give the spark somewhere to go, and so the jumper wire is going to the spark tester, and then I have an air gap set, and then that's going to ground. And the reason I want an air gap is if I would jump this coil to ground, then I'm essentially shorting out the secondary, and we'll have the same waveform on the scope. And the thing is is I did not want to leave this open and not give the spark anywhere to go. It's really bad for the coil and it's bad for the igniter. So I have to give the spark somewhere to go. And so I basically simulated the amount of resistance that the normal circuit is going to have. And that'll allow me to get you guys a good waveform after. So that'll be the final piece. You see we have good spark. Let me show you the good current ramp pattern. Should be set up right. I'm pretty close to where I was. <laughs> I changed the trigger level. I was able to change it. See how it's triggering more to the left now? The way I was able to do that is you come down to trigger and you go to the uh, this area. Let's see, we go. Yeah, and that gives me the either the grid center or left. And I like that. I didn't realize I could do that. I could move it over with it frozen. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So, you see the difference in the characteristics of that waveform? Um, it's also got a, a higher amperage, too. Um, 
let's see, measure that cursor. Measurement. So we were at like 7.8 amps before, now we're at 8.4. And they were both, I was fine with both of the height of those. It was the turn on oscillation. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you guys. Yeah. That is a good looking ramp. There is an oscillation there at the beginning that uh, I would have to really change my scales to show you guys that. But that is a good looking waveform. I believe if I hit B, it saves it. Uh, some way there's a way to recover these files. I'm not sure. I'm going to put the old one back in. Looks like my battery's dying here, too, which is not going to be good. Oh, that's good enough. I showed you guys the before and after pictures. I, I zoomed in on that a little bit more. All right, that's just a more zoomed in picture. We can go back to, I'll give you a better before and after because I was on five milliseconds. We'll go five and then show you the, and I'm centered left. So let's get our trigger set up where it was before. And that was grid centered. So this, this will be what, what we had before. And what I'll do, I'll superimpose that. I'll show you guys the, uh, let me press hold on that. All right. So now what I'll do for you guys, I'll do a split screen. And what you're looking at is you are looking at the before and the after picture. Notice the difference in the ramp itself and how it's got a ramp right away. It does not have that straight up line. That's a great looking picture. Um, to show you that turn on oscillation, I can do that real quick. My battery is dying, so I have a very limited window to do this. In that area, right there. Let's, let's unfreeze that. Look at it. Okay, can't always see the turn on oscillations with these coils, but that is a good looking signal for a coil. I'm good with that. I'll let you hear it run too. resistance measurement for those of you that care. I'm not a fan of this test. I've seen many shorted secondary coils read good. Primary would be from here to here. Secondary would be from the negative to the, the high tower or the coil tower or the positive to the coil tower. You're only going to read a couple of ohms difference depending on the location you pick. Uh, I'll show you both. It doesn't matter. You can use either one on the primary side. So one of the primary leads to the secondary. And over there on the screen it says 8.6K ohms. So that's 8,600 ohms. Okay. If I go to the other one, probably not going to see a difference because of my decimal point. Yeah, see, 8.6 bouncing around. Okay. So around 8,600 ohms. For the secondary, um, I'll, it's the secondary that's shorted, so we'll compare those first, then we'll do primary. Um, I'll just go to positive on this one. Doesn't matter, positive or negative of the coil to the coil tower, 15.9, so that's almost 16,000 ohms on the good coil. Clearly, clearly a resistance difference. I don't know what the spec is on this, but an ohmmeter uh, is helpful in this circumstance. And let's do primary. Primary is 
very small ohm, so we'll change our scales down to a 50 ohm. Actually, I could have auto scaled that too, but so primary winding would be going to each of the electrodes. A little bit hard with these big alligator clips. And there's a 0 0.8, 0 0.8 of an ohm. That is less than one ohm, guys. 0 0.8 on the good coil. Not so much worried about the primary. My primary was fine. Primary winding. Yeah, 0.8 on both. Okay, half the resistance though. So it did actually show it on this one. For you guys that care about the resistance measurement, just know that a lot of the time you will find resistance is in spec and it is difficult to identify a faulty ignition coil with a resistance measurement. As you can see, if you know what tool to get, you can do a lot of the stuff I'm doing for a lot less money. I think the master kit for this U-Scope, it's less than $400. You can get a basic kit for somewhere around 100 and something. Now it won't come with the amp probe. You want the amp probe. You definitely want the amp probe. But uh, good kit. It'll be in the description of this video too. You guys can follow that link there. It actually helps to support this channel too. And um, I hope you guys like that, man. We used a $20 incandescent test light. And, uh, you know, we could have, you know, for those of you that don't want to get further into this, that's all you needed to troubleshoot this Honda. Uh, the amp probe and the scope is really fast when you know how to do it. And um, so last part for this, I'm doing off camera. Uh, we're going to, being that we got the whole distributor, uh, I'll pull the new coil out, put it back into the new distributor. We'll put the whole distributor in because that's what the customer paid for. But the reason I pulled the coil out, I wanted to prove to you guys that it was a faulty coil and not a faulty igniter. Um, so yeah, and you guys that want more training, again, more videos in the description of this video. I'll put a bunch in there for control testing. Uh, using a test light, using a scope, some Hondas, Toyotas, Subarus. It'll be right up your alley. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.